biggest one that I'm super excited about was I got the salt monitor. Remember I was talking about um, the watching the level of the salt in the water softener and I got it working. Finally got this thing going. It was amazingly easy. This, uh, this setup right here is I think all I did. Let me go back and let me look and see. Oh, I don't know if I, here's my YAML for my ESP home YAML for my ultrasonic sensor. All the basic stuff is here. I just walked through the setup, basic stuff, basic stuff. This is all you need. Sensor, platform ultrasonic that I just used the same trigger pin and the echo pin. So that sensor, when you look at these sensors, if you haven't messed with them before, they have, they have four pins on them. You got a ground and a five volt pin. This is, it just says VCC. In this case, it's five volts. Then you have a trigger and you have an echo. So the trigger is D1 and the echo is D2. And let's see, yeah, so the trigger is where it sends out the signal and the echo is where it receives the signal back. And then it gives you a distance. You can do a couple things here that's kind of nice that you can um, up, you can change how, long, how often it ups, updates. It defaults to every minute. That was too much for me. Like this is, this is my water softener. And so the salt level in the water softener is gonna sink and it's gonna sink, 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 sink until it's nothing but a little bit of water at the bottom of the tank. So I don't really, but it's not gonna do it fast enough that I need an update every minute. So I changed mine to update every six hours. And honestly, that's probably more than I need. Um, I ran into a problem when I first set it up because the first thing I did was when I first did it, I set it to a day. I set it to one day. So then when I went to look at the logs, it wasn't giving me any information. Like if I didn't catch, if I didn't turn on the log before it sent its first signal, it wasn't sending any more signals. So I wasn't sure it was working. So that was, that was kind of dumb of me. I, when you started out, started out with something low, like every minute is fine. And then if you needed to up the intervals to something longer, then, then you can do that. But that's it. And then this filter non, this had to do with, uh, let's see, let's go back and look at that. That has to do with how it, uh, let's see. I think it has to do with how, so, so it doesn't time out or something. It was when the object is too far away and the timeout is set. Okay, so if no signal arrives back, then it would give you a NAN. This just makes it so it never gives you a NAN. And then this is what it looks like. And this is pretty crappy right now. I haven't fine tuned this very much, but um, it's, it's right around 0 0.17 meters away. And I guess sometimes it's changed to 0 0.6. So maybe, maybe like one little pebble of, of uh, salt moved or something. But in the long term, this is going to gradually start to go down. And I don't know how low it's going to go. I'll get to a point where I know how low it is. And then I can mark it and say, okay, that is the bottom. So when it hits that level, or honestly, when it is almost to that level, I don't want to wait till it gets to that level. I want it to be a little bit above that level. Then I'm going to set an automation. And I'll say when this sensor gets to that level, it'll probably be like 0.5 meters or something like that. I don't know for sure how long it'll be or how far down it'll be, but I'll set an automation that says when that hits that, then send me a notification. And I want to send, I want it to send me a notification every day that it's below that level until it's no longer below that level or something like that. So, but I'm very excited about this. This should solve a lot of my problems. And it was so easy. It was so easy. Let me show you. I'll show you how I put it together. I even... Got pictures. Here's the sensor hooked up to the D1 Mini. No big deal. Okay. Then I took the lid of the, the box and I put a couple of holes in it. These are 16 millimeter holes. So then I put that little guy, just stick it through the holes. No big deal. And in the end it looked like that. And then I put some, I don't like those live photo things. And then I just hot glued the heck out of it. Put a bunch of hot glue around it. Put a bunch of hot glue around this. And if this if this gets corroded because of the salt water, these sensors are like three bucks. So we'll see. That's all I can say. I read some forum somewhere where somebody did something almost just like this. They put a they put this sensor in their salt thing like that, and um, they had been running it at the time that they wrote the post. They'd been running it like that for a year, and it hadn't corroded their sensor. So I think that's pretty good. Uh, so I'm, I'm willing to take that risk. So 
And that's it. And then the last thing I did was I 3D printed a little box to fit on top of it. No big deal. This box is just going to go on top. It's going to it's going to house both of those devices. Anyways, this is just going to sit on top of that and I'm just going to hot glue around it again. This is just kind of protect protect the the D1 mini in the back of the sensor. That's it. And then that was just what it looked like when I got it working yesterday. So pretty awesome. Very excited. Simple. I didn't think it was going to be that easy. So that's fantastic. But yeah, generally, John, you're right. That's probably not a great environment, but we'll have to see. I don't know. Um, if you have issues with it not reflecting off the top of the salt pile, just set a piece of hard plastic on top of the pile and it'll sink with it. Christopher, you're a genius. Good point. That's great. And that would, because I was wondering about that, because that's an uneven surface. It should be okay, because it's still probably hard enough that this ultrasonic sensor should get a, a sound reflected back. But that's a great point. That is great. That's a great way to do it. So salty. <laughs> All right. So is the ultrasonic sensor the only device that's inside the salt bin? Yes. Yes. So the only, in fact, this is the inside of the lid right here. I wish I could not do the motion. There we go. Motion is off. Thank you. So this is the inside of the lid. So if you're, this is, you know, I, I took the lid, put the thing through the top and this, now you're looking at the bottom of the lid. So the, the only thing that's exposed to the salt is this, these two little bits right here. So, I mean, there's, yeah, there's some corrosion that could happen there. And obviously this stuff gets, um, you know, splattered around here a bit. I think though, most of this is splattered on here, honestly, because the lid is set on the ground and the boys dump the bags of salt in and stuff just splashes. <laughs> so, but we'll see. I mean, that's it. It's an experiment, right? We'll see what's going to, what will become of these uh, sensors as time goes by. So our, our water softener generally seems like we need about six months before it needs to refill with salt, sometimes a little less, but somewhere around there is the next time I'll go pop the lid off and I'll see how it's going. Um, assuming nothing else goes bad in the meantime. Why use salt in the water? Doesn't that make it harder going from old fish tank days? Well, what you're using the salt for is to make an environment that is, oh, help me out with this guys, the chemistry on this. You're making an environment that is more salty. And then there's some kind of a membrane, right? And so the, oh crap, I don't remember how it works. Water softener works based on ion exchange process. You see, see, exchange in the ions. The salty brine recharges the polymer balls in the water tank. Okay, thank you. That's awesome. See, you guys are geniuses. Car centers are for salty environment. Oh, I got you. Oh, okay. Okay. So there's special, there's special ultrasonic sensors for the cars. That makes sense. Okay, so for like these self-driving car things, they're putting ultrasonic sensors everywhere. Uh, and some of them, well, and those ones would be built for a very harsh environment. That's a good point. Okay. Okay, cool. So then this is the sensor. This this piece here you could is going to be the more, because this all is exactly the same. The difference is just that instead of having those two on the, those two eyeballs looking things inside, you put this inside and then all's well. This will last forever. Okay, cool. Well, there you go. That's a better one. Yeah, there's probably a few videos out there. I don't think I'll do a whole video on it. It was just too simple. I'll probably just clip out this part of it or just reference this part of this thing. So much easier. The part that bothered me, like I, I could probably live with the hard water as far as like, you know, my delicate skin. <laughs> but uh, when we first moved into this house, they hadn't been using the water softener for, I guess the house had been here for about six years and they they hadn't been using the water softener. And when we got here, one of the thing, one of the first things we had to do was replace like four or five sinks, you know, just, just a whole bunch of, of, uh, plumbing hardware had to be replaced because it was all just so garbaged up. Um, I guess there's sometimes you can, you know, put some whatever lime away sorts of things on there and you can try and, and you can try and salvage those things. But essentially it was a matter of if I don't want to replace a bunch of faucets every few years, then I'm going to need to fix this water softener business. And so they actually had the water softener piped wrong. Dumb. But it's pretty simple. The thing, the one thing to remember that I forgot when I was doing this too, 
is once you get this done, after you've you've made your file here, you've you validate it, you know, you you upload it. Uh, you can go to the logs and you can see in the logs, you'll be able to see the the output here. In just a minute, it'll start giving us the output. It'll say blah, blah, blah. And here's the output. So, <laughs> so now it's actually saying it's point. Now, so it was 0.17. Now it's 0.15. So I guess that's good. It's already syncing, right? And a point. So anyways, these are giving us the, the, the outputs. So once you see this, you know it's working. Uh, then the last thing that you need to do that I almost forgot, I did forget, is you got to go to configuration integrations and you'll have up here at the top above this configured uh, text, you'll have up here something that'll say ESP home, you know, configure. And you click that and you just say, do you want to add this to home assistant? You just say yes. And then it will show up as a sensor in home assistant. If you don't do that, it doesn't show up as a sensor until you've done that part. So that's uh, something not to forget. I, I had forgotten because I had been messing with so many of these other sensors and I had uploaded them and then I edit them and upload them and edit them and upload them, edit and upload them. And I hadn't had to go through that process again of doing the integrations part for a while. So I'd forgotten about it. What's with the water softener thing? Just got here. So um, hard water, if you have hard water in your house and you have a water softener and the salt level goes down and you don't, I, I figure it out usually because I can feel the difference in the water. When you have soft water, it's kind of slimy. It feels very slick. Um, and then when you have hard water, it's very sticky, like, you know, just putting your arm on your, uh, on your, um, your hand on your arm and you can feel it. And it's also the way that they, that if you have a, like a plumber come to your house and test it, um, they just mix it with soap. So they take what they, you know, they'll have a sample of like soft water and they'll put a little soap in there and they'll shake it up and it'll make a lot of bubbles. And then if you have hard water, they'll test your water and they'll put a little soap in there and they'll shake it up. And if there's not a lot of bubbles, then they know it's hard. Isn't that something? Does discovery have to be on for that? Uh, Oztech? No, it doesn't. It shouldn't, you, you shouldn't need discovery on. If you have to have, let's look at my config. If you have to have discovery, it would just be discovery colon in your configuration.yaml, which I believe is there by default. So if you do have to have it, it should already be there. Yeah, so I have this line here. I don't know if ESP Home relies on that or not. What sensor am I using? I'm just using one out of an Arduino kit. <laughs> I'm just using one out of a plain old Arduino kit. Like, in fact, you know, uh, Elgu, Elgu, E-L-E-G-O-O, -O, these guys, these guys, they make a bunch of these Arduino kits. They contacted me and said, hey, can we send you a, a kit? I said, yeah, of course you can. And um, they so they sent me this one. And this is actually the sensor that I'm using right here. So it's just this plain old HCSR04. They're pretty cheap. They're pretty easy to get. But um, the best part about this kit was that I got it. It came in the mail and uh, I opened it up and Dawson and one of his buddies were just getting home. They're in fifth grade. So they're 11. And uh, I, I got home. They were with me. I opened it up. I was like, oh, cool. And they got super excited. What is that? Can we play with that? Yeah. Yeah, you sure can, you know. And so they took it and sat down at an old laptop and went to town. And they got lights blinking and buzzers buzzing. And Dawson today is going to work on this LCD. What I love about this is that my 11-year-old boy is enjoying it. That makes me happy inside. <laughs> that makes me happy inside. You guys ready for the sign-off? As always, thanks for watching. Until next time.